Um, so I told him I wanted a drink. He said, okay, I'll buy you one. And so this time I sat on the sidewalk. He stayed in his little buggy and we were watching each other eye to eye. And uh, he asked me my name. And I got the, the feeling, of course, that his whole life was simply looking up at people and they were putting nickels and dimes in, their, in the basket. You know. What a life. I was the first one who ever uh, got angry with him. I wasn't angry, you know. But uh, that is where... Uh, Did you have to intentionally stop no. yourself from uh, uh, not being too caring or too, uh, too... just because he was different and he was a dwarf? Or well, you if thought it, it was... Did you make a conscious decision? That's what I mean. Like It was pretty automatic because automatic. I, you know, I really am uh, interested in all kinds of human beings. But uh, I was able to use uh, empathy. And that's been a key word also. Because empathy, you don't look down. If you look down, you have sympathy. I could have sympathized with the poor little guy, but no, I had empathy. You buy me a drink. And that had never happened. So, uh, that's about the end of that story. You always said to me that that was uh, necessary to have empathy on a person and not just be sympathy and have a, yeah. you know, it's a different thing, but to have empathy is to actually view life from the other point of view. We were talking about uh, who's in the world. You do know, I'm not going to have you read this, but... Uh, <laughs> that is also Yeah, I got in here. This monumental. Is, this is really just about, I think this is identical with the, uh, with the who's in the world. Mm -hmm. No need to be different. In but it is just America. Yes. And that's the world. Yes. Also, the good thing here is they break it down to uh, people in uh, physical science. Mm. These are physicists. In, uh, as a you name it, subject, in, huh? Yeah, in uh, Summit, New Jersey. Richard Feynman. Feynman? Well, this is American physicist. Okay, well, he is he alive? Dead. Oh, okay. Well, he's not going to be here. Anymore. Oh, this is only a lie? Oh, yeah, this is just a lie. That's a little biased. Well, no, there is a who, who was who. <laughs> so you can look at uh, 2007 or something. Uh, but notice it's by state. It's by state, so it's sort of fun to look in. Uh, but, but it's also by... That's physical science. And then there's religion. And then there's... Uh, Judicial administration, so they break it down. Wait, so you have religion? Yeah, different occupations. Humanities. I think I'm in the humanities. Um, they listed me in the humanities. But then you have Spain and England? No, no, this is America only. Okay. Only. Over there, they also break it down. But uh, it's a valuable book. No, it is. So much knowledge, so much wealth of information. These are sellable. They're I'm proud of you. Huh? Are you? Well, I'm proud of you. But uh, these have commercial value, particularly for, we'll say, foreign... For research purposes, of course. For foreign libraries. Of course, yes. Not just foreign libraries, for any kind of research institute. Any schools, mm -hmm. university, government agencies? Or I do know. remember giving... Uh, two of the books to Dominica's library. The librarian and I were friends and she appreciated this because uh, they had no no record of, uh, of Queen Elizabeth, we'll say, and now they had, they had all the, those details, you know. So. Now that is a great achievement, Juan. Well, uh, one of the reasons that I think I 
worked to get in there was that when I lived in Connecticut, I lived next door to a lady who was in Who's Who in America. And she once gave me uh, an old book she didn't want. And she was married to Doc Huddleston, and he was the psychiatrist that uh, investigated uh, Charles Lindbergh's son's kidnapper. Charles Lindbergh was the first one to go from, to fly an airplane from from America over to Europe. And he was a very famous person. He also was a rightist and an anti-Semite. Mm -hmm. But, um, so when they, when they caught the guy who kidnapped his son for money, and the son died, I think, I'm not sure about the son's dying, but at any rate, they caught the guy, and Doc Huddleston is the one who was uh, supposed, or was told to uh, investigate him. I took Doc Huddleston to dinner once, and he was so happy. He was old, he was 70 or something. <laughs> And he just jumped for joy. Nobody had asked him to go as a guest, you know. And so I tried to sound him out. I said, what was Hoffman like? He says, well, I can't, I can't say. I'm still under uh, secret obligations to the government. But he says he had tattoos on his back. Well, it's the first time I ever heard of that even, you know. He wouldn't, he wouldn't divulge anything. So your curiosity about people basically got you to write this That's book? That's really it. That's yeah. really what it is. And that technically is what uh, humanism is. It's, a, it's, a, uh, it's an association with the human race as distinguished from the feline group or the other kinds. And by the way, in, te in uh, teratology, uh, biologists use the word, let's say the plant is supposed to have a stem and it has two stems, well that's teratological. Not a mutant. Uh, well, I know biologists use it. I don't know about, I don't think physicists would. No. There's abnormalities, there's a... When we say abnormal, you see, that has a negative connotation. I try to s steer clear of that. Uh, yes. But I do realize that people use the word abnormal in a negative way. Uh, in linguistics, they call it snarl word. But snarl I word! I think more, I think in the sciences, I think they use it more as in to define uh, it's not expected, that it's not an expected uh, result. I think you're right, but... In a, every day, I would, I would right, But if that. it's not expected and it exists, then it's there. Then now we have to find a theory to explain why it's there. Yeah, yeah. That's all it is. It's good to know. I, I, I think it's also called a sport. Is it? In, in teratology, if something is that different, it's called a sport, meaning it, it's unusual, it's not expected. Yeah. Usually, you wouldn't use the word sport that way. Well, this has been fun talking with you about me. <laughs> it has been fun knowing more about you. Sure. I think every son should know about his father and his dad. Okay, buddy. It's good.